Hello and welcome to the video. I'm Jimmy the Mower and this is my operator's guide to the Ransoms Parkway 3. So you might think to yourself, if this is an operator's guide to the Ransoms Parkway 3 and how we use it to cut grass, then Jimmy, why are we in the workshop? Well, I'll tell you. Before we start our mowing day, we need to first of all give the machine a thorough check over to make sure everything is in good order. So what we do first is have a little visual inspection. We can walk round, make sure everything's tight and where it should be, come round, look at the front, everything's fine everything looks great everything's in order nothing's fell off we can have a little look underneath we can check for any leaks as we walk round make sure there's no puddles or anything on the floor so that seems all clear so now that's been done we can have a little look in the engine bay and make sure everything's fine in there to check the fluids in the engine bay, first of all, we have to take the top cover off. There's a little rubber tab down here. We pull this down and lift and the, end, and the bonnet goes back. It's on a nice little strap there, so it's held. If you ever need any more access to get right round to the back to have a look uh, between the radiators and stuff, you can unstrap this and pull it clear. Now, I've got a handy inspection lamp here to light things up. So it's a bit dark in my... Uh, workshop today I'll clip that on there and hopefully you can see what I'm doing now there's only a couple of things in here we looked underneath there weren't any puddles so we know we haven't got any major leaks it all looks pretty dry and clean in the engine or fairly clean a bit dusty I think last time we took this mower out it was chucking it down with rain there's mud everywhere we cleaned it off as you can see it's quite stained however we never put them away wet we always air dry them as much as we can so if it's cold and raining we air dry it we put it in we'll air dry it again so it's not really wet but you do get a lot of residue left on here when it's a better day we can get it outside pressure washer it off and dry it and then put it away properly but let's have a little look in the engine bay right we've got the engine coolant in here and now there's minimum underneath and maximum on top so you need it really in between those two um, that'll go round that keeps the engine cool and it fills up in this expansion tank here and uh, there's a little runoff on the top in case it gets too hot but you've got all that information down on your dash so it never happen as long as you've got the the level of the fluid in the right at the correct position that'll be fine secondly we can check the air filter now there's a little handy gauge on the top here of the air filter the air filter's housed in there that Keep, make sure that any air that's sucked into the engine to go through and make sure that the diesel burns properly is clean. So we look at this here and there's a little spring loaded uh, sort of gauge in there. And as that gets compacted in the air filter, as all the, the dirt gets compacted in, it makes it harder to draw and it pulls this down and it goes red. So we know the air filter's clean because this is clear and white. So that's that checked as well. Now, we have to check the oil, so I'm going to have to come around the other side, and pull the dipstick out, and I need a clean rag from somewhere. Here we've got, uh, I say a clean rag, we use this one just for testing oil because we don't want to put any dirt and grime back in there. So I'll just walk around and we'll check the oil over that side. So now we're around this side of the engine, I can reach down in there and pull out the dipstick. we we'll just give it a clean off. I don't normally clean these off because this engine hasn't been running, so but it's just best practice and we can push it back in down as far as it will go and pull it out and we can quite clearly see there we're between min and max now it is on the little a little bit on the low side so we could probably do with a little top up in there so I'll do that before we take it out mowing now we can close the engine bay up So that's all locked and secured and while I'm around this side I'm going to have a quick look at the hydraulic fluid. There's two red bars either side and green in the middle and we're slap bang in the middle of the green so we know that that's all good to go to. Last thing we do before we leave is check the tyre pressures and then the cylinders. 
The tyres on the Ransoms Parkways should be set at about 15 PSI. Now, the front ones and the rear ones run at the same pressure. I'm pretty sure that's about 15 PSI. I've been running these machines for over a decade. So I can look at them, I can see they're there or thereabouts. But if you haven't been running them for that long and you wanna make sure, you can always take the cap off and we'll just use a little digital uh, unit here and we can put that on and that should give us the exact gauge. Oh, and there we go, 15 PSI. Right, I'm happy with that. So little digital gauge, always handy to have with you, just in case you're not sure, you just double check. Now, I'll put the cap back on there, and best practice, I'll go round and I'll check all the others. It just goes to show that even with all those years of experience, you still don't always get it right. The tire over there was a little bit down and the one on the back was two PSI down. So I'm glad I went round with a digital gauge and checked them all. Now I'll put this away on the bench and we're gonna have a look at the rollers and the cylinders. The rollers on the front here, they support the cutting head. So when it's going along the ground, the rollers are there rolling along and they're keeping this off the floor and they stop it digging in and, and scraping up dirt basically. We've got a bottom blade on there. This has got a sharp edge on and we've got a cutting cylinder on the top. Now there's six knives on these cutting cylinders. You can get four, you can get eight. Depends which one you wanna do. I'll go for six, it's nice in the middle. I can cut some longer grass, I can cut some shorter grass. It's always good for me. Now we'll check the roller, that spins freely. I give it a wobble and we know that that's solid. The bearings in there need to be lubricated all the time and they'll keep it moving freely. If you have any problems with the bearings, you get a bit of a wobble in there and when you're going along, it will fluctuate up and down and you don't get an even cut. So it's really important that they're always in tip top condition. Next, with a cylinder, as I said, we use six knives on there. You spin it round by hand and now you probably can't hear anything they call it the ransom's whisper. As we spin that cylinder round, it should just be glancing off this bottom blade here, just glancing off there, and that allows it to cut the grass efficiently. To adjust the cylinder up and down, we use this knob on the top, you turn it clockwise and it pushes the cylinder down, and anti-clockwise and it releases the pressure and the cylinder moves back up. So now I've pushed it down, you should hear a bit of a clonking and a scraping. Yeah, now that's not any good for the cylinder or for the bottom blade. So we need to back that off. So we know got it to a sensible level and that's about it. When we're on the grass, we put these down, we do a test cut and we can adjust these and we can also adjust the height of the roller too, but I'll show you that when we're on the field. I better go round, I'll check the one over there and then I'll check the dreaded one underneath. That's all sound. Roller moving freely. And then the underbelly cylinder. Yeah, that's good. All moving freely as it should. Just check this side as well. Always check both sides. Yeah, that's great then. So we've checked the engine. We've checked the rollers, the cylinders. I think we're just about good to go. All we've got to do is get the machine out onto the grass. So as if by magic, here we are on a beautiful green field, hopefully gonna cut this grass and stripe it up. Now, before we start mowing, I'll just show you that I've got my woolly hat up there, my ear defenders, my safety glasses, and some gloves. I've already put on 
my jacket and a snood because it's very chilly today. I've also got my thermals underneath, but I won't show you those. So before we have a look at the controls, let's see how we get on the mower. We've got a lovely rollover protection system bar here. That stops the, any injury to you should the mower ever tip over. I don't think it ever will. We've never had any problems. We normally mow flat grass. We do mow the bank at the side. It's always been great with us. There's a small protection system at the front there and the steering wheel is reinforced as well. On there, we've got a handy handle. We can hold on to that. We can hold on to the steering wheel and we can lift ourselves up. Then we position ourselves in the seat. Then we've got a little foot pedal. We can lift the steering wheel up to there so you can get in and out easier. However, mine's always set about there and I like it just like that. I can see out of my mirrors perfectly. I can see what's in front of me. I can steer, I can look round both sides. It's absolutely fantastic. Now we've looked at that, we'll have a look at the control panel. So to see the control panel itself, we have to turn the ignition on. When we first start the machine, we turn it round to number one, number one and a half, and all the way around to ignition. You see this display lit up with ransoms, and it shows a warning. If incorrectly used, this machine can cause damage. Okay, we've got the display on there. This shows our fuel here. This shows us our um, coolant temperature over in this side. That's the time. That's saying that our cutters are currently disengaged and that the parking brake is on. Okay, so now we'll turn the key round to put the glow plugs on and we'll start the engine. Got a little count down there, one to zero. It can start up as high as eight or nine, but because we've had the engine running to drive it down onto the field, it was uh, already warmed up so it didn't need so long. So as I said, we've just run quickly through the control panel. We can now press this button on the end here and hold it down and that should give us our main menu. Now first on the main menu is the clock, we can press the tick button and again we've got 1st to the 3rd 2021 and the time 14.45 and 49 seconds. So press that again and you can alter that if you want and go along just like any digital clock. We'll press the book button and it goes back to the main menu. Now we can move it down to service, press the tick again and we've got a fault log, time until next service and diagnostics. Well, we know there's nothing in the fault log because we haven't had any problems. So we'll have a look at time until next service. We'll press that and it'll say time until next service, 19.4 hours and a nice picture of the spanner across the service manual underneath. So we know that we've got another night. Oh, it's just dropped down 19.3 now. We better get around these fields the next week in rapid time so we can get it in for its service. I'll press this button and we go back to the main menu. Now we press the down button again and we're getting into diagnostics. Now diagnostics, we'll press the tick and it'll just tell us basically a little bit about the machine. Remember in the workshop I said that you haven't got to worry about the, the engine overheating because we've got it all here. Water temperature 70 degrees C, fuel level at 54%, system voltage at 14.2 and the cutter hours at 235.2. Everything is running tickety-boo. We'll go back to the main menu now all the way back and we're at the front. He's telling us exactly what we need to know. The only information we really need are whether the cutters are on or off, what the engine temperature is and how much fuel we've got. And obviously the time because you need to know when to have your sandwiches. So now we know all about the control panel. All we need to do now is work out what these buttons do and then we can get cutting some grass. First of all, we've got the parking brakes on. This is the parking brake off and it will disappear. We can then push the button down and pull it back and that's parking brake on. We cannot move forwards or backwards. You hear the engine strain because it's pushing against the parking brake. It won't move. These are your hazard warning lights on there. This is your four wheel drive in reverse. Now, we're at the start of the season, the ground can be boggy. There's a lot of fields where there's underground springs and water pools and stuff. And you could be going through there and we've got a little button that we can take the weight off the cutting reels so the wheels will turn. However, sometimes you do get bogged down and you need to reverse out of a situation. You can press this button and that will lock up the diffs and be able to give you four wheel drive in reverse and you can get out safely. Now, the all important button is the cutter button. That's the cutters on and off. When you put the cutters on, there's a little light lights up on your, on your hand display and you can see that they're on. We'll just turn those off for now. We've got everything ready to go. 
we can just lift the revs up. We need the hydraulic oil to be running round at a full pressure really before we start the cutting unit. So before we drive off then we have to lift it up to full throttle. We do that by pushing it from the turtle to the hair. This gets the hydraulic oil up to pressure, pushes it all around the system. We then take the parking brake off so we're free to move. We can drop each arm, all the lights light up. They're all four, all three, sorry, are green. So it's all lit up and ready to go. And then we engage the cutters. Here them start to spin and now we're cutting grass. See how it looks. Just take it nice and steady to start with. See how it works out. We get to the end of the line, lift the cutters up, turn them off and drive back. Now, I can see on there, that's a vast difference to what we just did. We're just nipping the tops off there, never take more than a third, and at the start or the end of the season, never more than a quarter, really. It looks a little bit flatter where the tyres have been as opposed to where the cutters have been, but I think that's more or less right. I might just nip them down a little bit and just to see if we can get a better finish. I'll do that now. So now we've done a test cut, we can actually lower the cutters down a little bit, which is surprising really, because I thought it'd be a lot longer than it is at the moment. But that's all good, because it helps me show you what we have to do. So to adjust the cutters, we've got the cutting height here. We need a 19mm spanner or a 19mm ratchet and socket set, and we clip that on the top. You just turn it round and it's clockwise, pushes it down, and that lowers the height of cut. And anti-clockwise, we turn it round and come back, and that lifts it up and that hires the height of cut. Now we set them up, there are four rings visible on, on the cutter. Uh, it goes all the way up, I think it's seven or eight, I'm not 100% sure, we never really cut grass that long. But we normally start off at about four at the start of the season and we work our way down to three and if we're cutting cricket outfields we like to get that down to two so it's nice and low. We use the, the rings as a guide. If you have a new machine like mine with new cutting heads, these will be pretty accurate across the machine. So every cutter set at four rings will give you the same finish. If your mower's a little bit older, it's the end of the season, it's a bit battered, it's a bit bent, things can run out of true. And if you set them all at your four rings, three rings, two rings, whichever you'd like to do, you can do that and it's a good starting point. Then you do a test cut and you can adjust accordingly and you'll know exactly that it's going to be 100% where you need it to be. So let's get all these adjusted down to three rings and we'll do another test cut. So that's all done. Everything's set down and adjusted to three rings. I can put the socket set back in the little toolbox behind the seat, jump on, do another test cut, and then hopefully we're good to mow the rest of the field. Yes, we can see that looks a lot shorter. It's not a considerable difference really for the overall field, but for those two little stripes there, I think that's made a vast improvement. I'm gonna fire the mower up now, give me about 25, 30 minutes. I'll do the rest of the field and then we'll come back and clean the mower off.
how great is that then just about half an hour and we've done this football pitch and the surrounds and wow isn't the ransoms parkway a fantastic machine just look at those stripes there it's great at going up and down in straight lines or fairly straightish if you drive it like me but not only that it's great at doing the surrounds as well really agile at the flick of a finger you can lift it up go over a manhole cover drop it back down or a drain really great to use designed with the operator in mind well normally we clean it off on the field and then we take it back to the workshop and we get it greased up but as you can see the sun's starting to come out now and I've spent a lot of time in my workshop this winter so I'm going to take it down onto the edge of the field there we're going to clean it down and we'll grease it up here and make the most of the sunshine so after your day's mowing you want to keep the machine in tip-top condition so it's going to last you a lifetime the first thing we do is just blow off any excess grass and excess dirt we use a petrol blower for that and there are a couple of points under there and under there that we need to get to and also blow out from under the center reel so i'll fire this up and get that done Well, that's got the majority of it off. Now we can start at greasing the cutters up. When we get back, we can wash the mower down. Whether you do that once a day, once a week, a fortnight, a month, that's up to you. As are done roughly every week. At the moment, there's quite a lot of mud around, the ground's soft, so they're getting caked. So we clean them off and grease them up, knowing that that'll keep out any moisture. Let's go and fetch a grease gun and get started. So the sun's really blazing now, what a great spring day. Fantastic day to be working outside. So we're ready to grease. I've got a rag in my hand here to wipe off any excess. I've got a grease gun here, full and ready to go. And the grease we're using is a high temperature bearing grease. Now that's highly recommended for these cutting heads because obviously they're spinning around at such fast speeds. They get really, really hot. Now we've got a grease nipple on the end here. This is where the end of the cylinder sits in the, just the end block really, just enable it to turn. And we've got one over here where it's driven by the hydraulic motor. So the, both of those need to be greased up every time you use the machine. In the middle, we've got a third grease nipple and this allows this arm to pivot when we're going over uneven ground. The cutting head can wobble side to side, but it will always maintain its pressure down on the ground as long as this is greased. So we'll get those three points done first and then we've got exactly the same to do on that one over there and exactly the same to do on the one underneath there and then we can lift them up and move on to the next stage there you go it doesn't take much on these just a couple of pumps because we do them quite often almost every time we use the mower if conditions are right so it doesn't take long at all just thread that down onto there the hardest thing sometimes is getting the actual grease gun back off the nipple so there you go just a bit more in there and we'll pop some into here now you don't want to put too much in that it really starts to burst out either side you can see it just start to move along and when you feel the pressure in there that's more than enough so we'll take that off just wipe off the excess and now that's done i'll go and do that one over there and then the dreaded center reel underneath <laughs> So that's all of those done apart from the awkward little bit in the center but i'll show you how to do that in a minute now we'll lift up these arms and we can do the ends now we've lubricated the cutting cylinder and the pivot points on here we need to lubricate the height adjuster remember when we were putting the test cuts in over there we adjusted it down a couple of rings well that's so easy because we always keep these lubricated there's a pin either side grease nipple there and one down at the bottom and we just clip that on there and do it and these should be full they don't lose any grease really because there's no real movement in them unless we're turning with a spanner so I presume it'll just come out the seal at the top yep there it does that's it they're always 
pretty much full. Just make sure though, because occasionally you might get one where it's come a bit loose and there's some water or dirt got in there and it'll push the grease out. So it's always worthwhile checking them every day. I'll just do the one at the bottom on this side, same over the other side, and then again underneath. So we nearly finished the greasing now. Just a couple of things left to do. One of those is the rollers. Now remember in the workshop, we're on about the rollers moving freely. Well, there's a lot of worm casts on today. We have to put up with those at the end of the season and the start of the season. Now we carry an old blunt bread knife with us. There's no, nothing sharp about that whatsoever. And we can just cut down on there and then take this soil off. Just as though you're in a kebab shop, <laughs> taking it off. Could always be a part-time job in winter, couldn't it? So we just take the soil off there. That's the excess soil removed. And that just allows the the real, oh sorry, the roller to spin round freely. So we can see it's moving freely, and there's no problem with it. So that's all good. These scraper wires on the back are great. Absolutely fantastic for grass. When it's really wet and muddy, they don't really do a lot, and it does tend to build up on the on the roller itself. But in the summertime, when you're cutting grass and you need perfect presentation, this will take all the grass off and it'll be, uh, it'll be great. So there's just a greasing point on here. There's one at the top and one at the bottom. Sometimes you have sealed rollers, sometimes you have greasable rollers. And with us, we've got greasable rollers on this machine. So I'll just pop the grease gun on the top like this. And get that in there. And then we can just put a couple of pumps through and that's fine and that's as much as it needs. The last two greasing points are probably the most inaccessible and we always put a little red cap on there so if anybody's using the machine for the first time or isn't really familiar with it they can always see them. The first one is the pivot point for the centre reel under there. Now we always used to call it the dreaded centre reel but Ransom solved that problem. I can't do it here because we're on a soft surface but if you need to inspect that centre reel for any reason we can undo these bolts and we can slide it out along this track. So it comes out to here and we can inspect it, inspect the roll of the cylinder and everything. You don't have to lie on the floor and do it, it's all really accessible. So that's a great great feature on this machine. So I'll grease that one underneath there and then round at the back we've got the steering ram and again a red cap on there so if anybody's inexperienced or not familiar with the machine it's easily spottable for them and they can see where it is so that one to do and that one to do and then that's us done and we can go back and put it to bed Well that's it then, it's all done and dusted. All we've got to do is load this up onto the trailer and get it back to the workshop and put it to bed for the night. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video as much as I've enjoyed making it and I hope you found it informative. If you've got any questions or queries, please pop them in the comments section below. If you've got anything nice to say, you can pop that in there too. If you're after any links, either to the Ransoms machine itself, their website or for the user manuals, they will all be in the description. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jimmy the Mower, I'll catch you on the next one.